What's happening? Hello world. Welcome to your fifth SQL Server tutorial. My name is Johnny DeLuca and today I want to talk to you about designing SQL Server databases using PSQL and using SQL Server Management Studio. We're going to go through both and then afterwards I will be giving you a breakdown on all the default databases that come installed in SQL Server. So, to begin, let's start. We're going to go, if you haven't done so already, go to Start All Programs, Microsoft SQL Server 2012, then go to Management Studio, and then go ahead and connect. And then once you're here, you're going to go to this Databases folder, you're going to right click we're going to click new database then up here we're going to make sure we have the general tab selected we're going to go over here and give it a name how about my first database sounds good and then if you haven't done so um, go well first I'll just show you we're going to change the path here we're going to change it to this right here, the SQL data. Now you might not have this on your C drive, so if you haven't done so, go to your C drive and create a folder SQL data and one SQL log, because you're going to need them both. Okay, so we're going to click OK right there. And now I'm going to go over the file name and my first database. All right, and here we're going to do the same thing, but change this to log. Boom. Same thing here. But then we're going to go underscore log. Alright, we're good to go. Um, we're going to go over here. Yep, that looks good. Then we're just going to click OK. And check it out. There we go. We've created a new database. It's really that easy. Now I'm going to show you how to do the exact same thing using PSQL. Okay, we're going to go to the query editor here. Click New Query. Now I, uh, before I started filming this, I already went and typed up the script and I have it ready to go. Just right click, paste to save some time. And then we're going to go over here to execute. Bam. We're going to go over here. Refresh. And voila. My database too. Alright. Now let me give you a real quick breakdown on everything you're seeing in here in this uh, T-SQL script. Uh, create database. Okay. Well that's creating the name of the database right there. Now on what does that on on specifies the file group and begins the section where the data file is defined okay and skipping down to here log on right here log on begins the section where the log is defined and at this point you don't know what a log is i haven't gone over that but afterwards i'll be explaining what a log file is okay and then you see the name right here and right here Name is the logical file name used by SQL Server when referencing a file. And it must be unique. Alright. And then file name. We see right here. And that's for many of you pretty self-explanatory. But just in case. The file name is operating, operating system path and file name. And it includes the file extension. <laughs> the size. This is pretty self-explanatory for a lot of you. That's showing that it's 10 megabytes and it can be specified in kilobytes, gigabytes, or terabytes. Max size, that's the maximum size can go to 20 megabytes. And then file growth specifies the growth increment of the file. And as we can see, it's uh, right there, 10%. So there's a quick little uh, breakdown of this simple T-SQL script that creates a database for you. Either way you want to do it is fine using Management Studio or using T-SQL. Uh, doesn't really matter. I find that, you know, for common tasks like creating a database, it's pretty easy and time-saving just to have uh, a folder of T-SQL scripts such as this and just boom, bingo, bango, bongo, cut and paste, you're done. Now, 
I want to go back, I'm going to expand this folder here, System Database. And you can see we've got Master, Model, MSDB, and TempDB. So let me give you a little breakdown of what these all do. Okay, starting with the master. The master database, as its name suggests, is the primary system database. Without it, SQL Server cannot start. The master database contains the most important information about objects within the SQL Server instance, such as the following. Number one, database. Number two, always on. Number three, database mirroring. Number four, configurations. <coughs> Excuse me. Number five, logins. Six, resource governor. And seven, endpoints. Let's say if you want to quickly obtain a list of all databases on an instance of SQL Server, you can execute a uh, following uh, query that would uh, <coughs> get you that. And that query would look like this. It will be select. Oops. Well, I'm just typing everything. And then we're going to do, um, <coughs> excuse me here. <coughs> oh, man. Sorry, I had to pause it for a second there. I just had a little bit of a coughing spell. So, anyways, <coughs> we're going to go select all. And we're going to go from system, SYS, uh, dot master, underscore, file. And, as you can see, this little thing right here that was trying to suggest for me and do the work for me. That's called IntelliSense and you'll find that's a huge time saving task. But anyways, um, this query returns a list of databases and also additional configuration options that have been specified for each database. This approach is faster than using Management Studio where you view the uh, information one database at a time. And that's kind of what I was saying. But you know, it doesn't really make a difference if you want to use Management Studio if you're more comfortable doing it that way. It doesn't really save that much time. So, all right, uh, I just wanted to show you that. Uh, and then we're going to move on to uh, the TempDB database. That's this last guy right here. The TempDB database is a global playground. Think of it as like a sandbox, you know, the playground for temporary objects created by the internal processes that run SQL Server and temporary objects that are created by users or applications. These temporary objects include temporary tables and stored procedures, table variables, global temporary tables, and cursors. And in addition to temporary objects, TempDB stores row versions for read committed or snapshot isolation transactions, online index operation, and after triggers. One important thing to note about TempDB is that it is recreated every time SQL Server is restarted. Although you can create objects in TempDB, you should never use it as a database where persisted information is stored. Because you can get screwed. Alright, next one, the model. The second one on our list right here, the model, this guy. The model database is exactly what its name implies a model for all databases that are created on an instance of SQL Server. In other words, it's used as a template each time you create a database. For example, if you want a particular table to exist in every database created on an instance of SQL Server, you will create that table in the model database, and as a result, each time a database is created, it will include that table. And just something to take note of, if the model database does not exist or is offline, TempDB cannot be created. This is because, as mentioned before, it is recreated each time SQL Server is restarted. Since each database uses model as a template and TempDB is no exception, it must exist to recreate TempDB at startup. So keep that in mind. Um, the MSDB. Okay. This MSDB serves primarily as the back-end database for SQL Server agent. Whenever you create and or schedule a SQL Server agent job, the metadata for that job is stored in this database. In addition to SQL Server agent data, MSDB stores information for the following components. Number one, service brokers. Number two, alerts. Number three, log shipping. Number four, SSIS packages, number five, utility control point, 
uh, six database mail, and seven maintenance plan. All right, um, and then a couple other uh, databases uh, that are. Uh, I'm going to cover, you're not seeing it right here, it's a hidden one, it's called the resource database. But the resource database is a hidden read-only database that is usually not discussed very often, but you should still know about it. The resource database's primary purpose is to improve the upgrade process from one version of SQL Server to the next. All system objects for an instance of SQL Server are stored within the resource database. This database cannot be backed up or restored, so don't pose it. <laughs> you should not attempt to change or remove this database unless you're on the phone with Microsoft support and they direct you to do so. So that way you can be like, hey, you royally screwed me. Now you're liable. <laughs> All right. And then the last one I want to talk to you about is called the distribution database. And the final system database is the distribution database. This database exists only when you have configured this instance as a distributor for replication. Prior to configuring replication, you must perform this configuration. All metadata and history for the various types of replication are stored within this database. All right, so there you have it. I showed you how to create a database using SQL Server Management Studio. I showed you how to create a database using T-SQL, and I gave you a breakdown of all the system databases. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, as always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for stopping by my YouTube 